Hello students, I am Dr. Shilpa Shri and welcome to my channel Study Management. In this video, we will be studying a very important concept in organizational behavior that is learning. Let us first understand the meaning of learning. Learning in simple words is a change in the behavior as a result of experience. Now here you need to keep in mind two important points. The first one is that change must be relatively permanent. This means that after learning our behavior must be different compared to our behavior prior to the learning experience. For example, when you le learn to drive a car, there is a change in your behavior during the process of learning. You become more confident than before. Similarly, even in the case of using a computer, your behavior is changed once you have learned how to operate a computer. In both these cases, the change has occurred due to some kind of experience or practice which is the essence of learning. The second point you need to consider is that learning is not caused by biological maturation. For example, a child does not learn to walk. It is a natural biological phenomenon. Any natural phenomenon that takes place in living beings as per the law of nature cannot be considered as learning. Now, let us understand the various definitions of learning given by various authors. According to Stephen P. Robbins, learning is any relatively permanent change in behavior that occurs as a result of experience. According to Moon NL, learning is a process of having one's behavior modified more or less permanently by what he does and the consequences of his actions or by what he observes. Thus, from the above two definitions, it is clear that as a unique determinant of behavior, learning cannot take place unless the learner actually experiences what has to be learned. Theories of learning in organizational behavior, we need to understand four important theories of learning. They are classical conditioning theory, operant conditioning theory, cognitive learning theory and social learning theory. Let us first understand classical conditioning theory. Classical conditioning is one of the simplest forms of learning. This theory was proposed by a Russian psychologist Ivan Pavlova. He explained the classical conditioning theory based on his experiment on a dog and tried to relate the dog's salivation with the ringing of the bell. In the first phase of experiment, when Pavlov offered food to the dog, he noticed a great deal of salivation. Here, food is an unconditioned stimulus and salivation is an unconditioned response. It is natural for a dog to salivate whenever food or a piece of meat is offered to him. In the second phase of the experiment, Pavlov did not give him any food but he simply rang a bell. Pavlov noticed that there was no salivation in the dog. In the third phase of the experiment, Pavlo tried to pair the ringing of the bell with the food. That is, he first rang the bell and then offered the food to the dog and he repeated this several times. He noticed salivation in the dog. In the final phase of the experiment, Pavlo observed that the dog would salivate merely at the sound of the bell even if no food was offered. The dog had actually learned to respond that is to salivate to the sound of the bell as it was conditioned to link the sound of the bell with the food. Therefore, classical conditioning theory focuses on building up an association between an unconditioned stimulus which is food and conditioned stimulus which is a bell to elicit the desired response that is salivation. Now, let us understand how classical conditioning takes place in an organization. Take for example, when a CEO of a large company visits one of its branches, the employees of that particular branch start making all the necessary arrangements for the company CEO's 
visit. All the reports will be updated. Files and records will be arranged properly. Window panes and floors and all the sections of the branch office will be cleaned up and the employees will be dressed neatly. This is a natural phenomenon wherein employees become more alert with the visit of the CEO. It is an unconditional response to an unconditional stimuli. Next, whenever there is any such kind of activities undertaken in the branch, such as making arrangements, cleaning, updating reports and so on, the employees tend to be alert and they work harder to give their best as the visit of the top management personnel is associated with such kind of arrangements. Now, let us understand the second important theory of learning, that is operant conditioning theory. This theory was proposed by Harvard psychologist named B.F. Skinner. This theory argues that the behavior which leads to positive outcome is likely to be repeated and the behavior which leads to negative outcome is likely to be avoided. And in order to explain this theory, Skinner developed a box known as the Skinner box and he used this box to conduct different experiments on rats. The Skinner box is a simple box having certain features such as a liver, light, water, food dispenser. A hungry rat is placed inside the box. Initially, the rat sits idle, but later, gradually, it starts exploring inside the box and all of a sudden, it presses the liver. As the liver is pressed, pieces of food are released. The rat soon learns that pressing the liver would get him some food. Further in the experiment, two lights, that is red and green light, were introduced into the box. If the rat presses the liver, when the green light is on, it receives pieces of food as a reward and if it presses the liver when the red light is on it receives a mild electric shock. The rat soon learns to discriminate between the two lights. As a result the rat learns to press the liver only when the green light flashes and it avoids the red light. Therefore, with this experiment, Skinner proved that behavior that are followed by consequences that are satisfying and rewarding are more likely to be repeated and this behavior is known as positive reinforcement and the behaviors that are followed by unpleasant consequences such as punishment are less likely to be repeated which is known as the negative reinforcement. Now, let us understand how operant conditioning takes place in an organization. Take for example, if the employees working in the sales department reach the assigned target of sales quota set for a month, then they will be reinforced with attractive rewards. Giving attractive rewards like hike in salary, commission, giving titles such as employee of the month will motivate the employees to work more harder and giving them the rewards will lead to positive reinforcement. The third important theory of learning is cognitive theory. The term cognition refers to an individual's thoughts, knowledge, interpretations, understandings or ideas about himself and his environment. In other words, the term cognition refers to the process by which knowledge and understanding is developed in the mind of the individual. Here the learner tries to form a cognitive structure in the memory which preserves and organizes all information relating to the events that may occur in the learning situation. Learning by insight is one kind of cognitive learning theory which was proposed by a German psychologist named Wolfgang Kohler. He explained this theory based on two types of experiments that he conducted on monkeys. In the first experiment, Kohler hung a bunch of bananas inside the cage that was out of reach of the monkey. He left few boxes and sticks inside the cage. Kohler observed the monkey's unsuccessful attempts to reach the banana by jumping or throwing sticks at them. Eventually, the monkey solved the problem by piling the boxes on one top of the other until he could reach the bananas. In the second 
experiment, Kohler placed two sticks of different lengths, but the monkey was unable to reach the bananas with either of the st two sticks as both of them were very short to reach the bananas. So, he solved the problem by fixing the two sticks together to form one long stick and he was finally successful in reaching the bananas. So, with this, these two experiments, Kohler concluded that learning by insight occurs when and there is a sudden immediate and clear understanding of the problem and solving it without any trial and error method. Let us now understand the second kind of cognitive theory known as the latent learning. Latent learning theory was introduced by a psychologist named Edward Tolman. Latent learning refers to the knowledge that becomes clear only when a person has a motivation in the form of reward or incentive to display it. Tolman explained this theory with the experiment on rats. The experiment consisted of three groups of rats that were placed in a maze daily for 17 days. The first group of rat always received food as a reward at the end of the maze. The second group received the food as a reward on the 11th day and the third group did not receive any food for the entire duration of the experiment. The researchers found that the first group showed a steady improvement in the performance over the 17 days period. The second group after being rewarded on the 11th day showed a marked improvement from the very next day after it received the reward and they outperformed the rats that had been rewarded daily and the third group which did not receive any reward showed gradual improvement. Tolman observed that latent learning had occurred in the second group of the rats. They had actually developed a cognitive map a mental picture of the layout of the maze once they learned that they were about to get a reward that is food at the end of the maze. They were able to find their way through the maze quickly compared to the other two groups. With this experiment, Tolman concluded that Learning can take place without any reinforcement, but the result of learning becomes more evident only after the individual is being motivated. Both types of cognitive theory, theories, that is learning by insight and latent learning, are very essential in an organization. Employees undergo the mental process of thinking, problem solving, interpreting, understanding to solve the problems that arise in the workplace. Now let us understand the fourth important learning theory that is social learning theory. Also called as the observational learning, social learning theory emphasizes the ability of an individual to learn by observing others. The person who demonstrates the behavior or whose behavior is imitated is called as a role model. The important role models in our life may include parents, teachers, peers, TV personalities, sports persons and so on. Albert Bandura, a Canadian-American psychologist, tried to explain this theory through his famous experiment known as the Bandura's Bobo doll experiment. In this experiment, a group of children were placed in a room in which they witnessed an adult hitting a Bobo doll in an aggressive manner. The children were later given the opportunity to play with the Bobo dolls for themselves. The researchers found that the group of children who had observed the adult behaving violently towards the Bobo doll acted aggressively towards it by punching and kicking the doll. Another group of children were placed in a similar room which also consisted of the Bobo doll. But here in this room, the adult was simply engaged in playing with the other toys that were placed in the room, completely ignoring the Bobo doll. And the same sequence of behavior was followed by the children. Through this experiment, 
Albert Bandura concluded that children are able to learn social behavior such as aggression through the process of observation learning by watching the behavior of another person. Social learning has considerable relevance even in organizations. For example, a new employee learns new job skills by observing an experienced employee. Here, I have listed few books on organizational behavior that covers the topic theories of learning that you can refer for your further reading and understanding. I hope you have enjoyed watching my video. Thanks for watching and please do like, share and subscribe to my channel.